Good morning. I've been uh, in Delhi for the last few days, so I have my Delhi throat. Uh, so uh, my apologies. Uh, uh, but I picked this uh, topic uh, today, actually. It, as you can see, um, does age really matter? It's a pretty provocative topic. It's not something someone like me would be expert in talking about it. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physician or a psychologist. But what I'm going to talk about today is, is basically uh, take this approach in the process safety sense and then start asking the question, does age really matter? And what I want to really give a, uh, go out with that message is really if we do graceful aging, then it doesn't matter, okay? But there is a lot more it takes to be a graceful aging, okay? Before I start my talk, let me just tell you a little bit about my organization, Center, of Ch Center for Chemical Process Safety. Uh, hopefully it's not new to uh, many of you. It was started after the Bhopal incident, and I'm very honored to really uh, uh, listen to you uh, Brought this up today. Uh, uh, it's an organization which started in 1985 um, with the, a very clear remit is to help minimize significant process safety incidents. And the industry uh, is basically all process industry. It just does not focus only on one. So we go from oil, gas, petroleum, petrochemicals, chemicals, pharmaceutical, uh, engineering organization, uh, food industry, uh, consulting uh, industry, which support process safety. Uh, we are currently actually 223 members around the world. We are supported by uh, uh, corporate uh, members, uh, and we are part of American Institute of Chemical Engineers, uh, and we are headquartered in uh, New York City. In every meeting I start, I always remind myself why am I here, why we are all here talking about process safety. It's really to protect people, property, and environment, and I keep that in that priority with the collective wisdom of not only our corporate members, but also our stakeholders. That's a lot of you, okay? And our mission is very simple, is to eliminate significant process safety incident. We really do not want to see uh, that horrific incident we had in 1984. Let me uh, go back. If it's going to go back or not. Yes. These are all our members around the world. Uh, we are actually about 50% in the U.S. and remaining 50% outside the U.S. Uh, and India actually is a, a major contributor, so I'll show you. Uh, these are our members in India. It's really some of the indigenous members who are headquartered here, uh, but also uh, those who are global members with the presence here. So we are very uh, actually fortunate to have a, a, a large uh, cadre of uh, members here who are committed on process safety, and we always are willing to expand that. Uh, and last week, we actually had a meeting uh, uh, in, in Delhi, uh, in, uh, uh, sponsored by Gale, and uh, about 80 individuals uh, very committed in sharing process safety. So uh, I look forward to more interaction with many of you. So. <coughs> Let's start, why age matters, okay? And I'm gonna focus on two areas. Uh, one is plant and equipment. A key asset for us, right? Those who are in operation, we always worry about our facilities. And the second one is human resource. Okay, so those are the two topic. Uh, um, <coughs> I had used this slide uh, recently uh, in one of my uh, presentation, and it was actually more reminders to me that we are not done yet. 
there. And this actually slide depicts only the incidents which, were, which happened only in 2019. We had a horrific year, 2019. And of that, many of those incidents were in the US, okay? So, uh, so we started looking at what's going on, and, and one area starting to come out that some of this incident had was in facilities which were at least more than 50 years old, okay? So there is some age issue here, okay? Uh, I'm not saying that all 50-year-old companies have problems. I think people manage them pretty well. I think we have quite a few uh, 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 fairly older facilities. But if you do not manage right, and I'll pick one incident, will kind of highlight what I'm talking about uh, on this one. And several of those incidents had similar issue. So this is the incident very close to where I live uh, in Pennsylvania. It was in Philadelphia. Actually, it happened to be the most expensive incident of 2019. The company lost $715 million, okay? Um, so when the root cause analysis, and of course, Chemical Safety Board is uh, doing the root cause analysis, but initial indications are that, that it happened because of a failure of a component, an elbow, failure, small component. And as they started unpeeling the onion, they found out that this metallurgy used in this component was allowed when the plant was built. Unfortunately, 20 years later, new standards came out by ASTM, and they disallowed this metallurgy. Well, if you are savvy enough to maintain the life cycle of standards in your plant, you will change some of those things. But that's not an easy thing. To retrofit our existing facility with new standards is not an easy thing. And I think that's where best-in-class companies have done a lot more and how we can get our standards implemented in a risk-based approach. Because if you're gonna start applying the new standards for every fa old facilities, you will go out of business. But if you make your facility fit for purpose for this new intention of the standard, I think you can do it well. And many companies do that. Actually, CCP has actually uh, uh, delivered this uh, book uh, uh, two, three years ago, actually, uh, dealing with aging process, process safety facilities and infrastructure. And it kind of gets into a pretty uh, in-depth look of why uh, we need to have a graceful aging of our facilities. And it spends a lot of time on application of new standards. Many companies have applied the retrofitting of the new standards into the old facility very well. And you have to do it uh, in a most cost-effective way. Uh, especially when you have multiple facilities of the same kind, it becomes a pretty expensive expedition, okay? So aging does matter. So let me kind of switch the gear on the human resources. Uh, Many of you have heard uh, that we are going through a, a, a generation change. A lot of our aging partners are kind of moving on to uh, doing a better thing. Uh, but are they keeping a gap? And I'm going to focus mostly on the process safety side. Uh, and I see that it's a huge issue. Loss of experience, loss of corporate memory, lack of understanding, and understanding of risk management. And I'm talking about those of new coming people, and we really don't have a good transition or knowledge management. So we at, at CCPS and AICAT think that this is a huge issue. This is even a significant bigger issue than what I just talked about on the asset. Uh, uh, and if we don't do something about it, I think we will start to have a, a major issue of how do we effectively manage this thing. 
So in response to this, what we have done is we are improving process safety education in the engineering area. Not just chemical engineering, in the engineering area because process safety is for all engineering discipline. We are training the professors. We have to do that because many professors have, do not go, have not gone to facilities to understand what the real hazards are and what the real magnitude of the process equipment we deal with. We are training industry personnel. A lot of the newcomer industry personnel or existing personnel probably do not have a, a good base of process safety, so we need to do that. And we are training the early career professional. A lot of the people, a lot of the students coming out from the, uh, the colleges do not have the same level of experience uh, on process safety. So this is something we must, must do. We have been doing that uh, since last four or five years uh, uh, through faculty workshop, through developing new content. This content actually once finalized, which would be uh, next year, would have 35 or 34 online modules, about two hours each, available to all students around the world free of charge. So our focus is by 2024, we will have that applied and hopefully it would be used. And it would be translated into different languages depending upon the needs. So that's been happening. Uh, we are actually doing uh, uh, a lot of the uh, faculty workshop uh, around the world. Uh, and now we have done one in India uh, two years ago with Reliance. We'll do it one again. We're starting to do some more in Europe, but most of the focus has been in the US. Uh, over 500 plus professors have been trained 429 universities have been engaged. Uh, I think in, in, in India now we are working closely with uh, MIT, Maharashtra Institute of Technology. I think they are very eager to kind of engage, so we will do that. Uh, and once you finish those courses, each course would have a certificate attached to that, and, and we are kind of providing that. And most of the universities are starting to use this as a step gap stop gap to really get process safety in their field. A quick view on uh, our engagement with the industry, engagement with different organizations. I'm glad to see Mr. Mittal is here. We, we just talked with MOIDC uh, last week uh, and looking forward to uh, a, a collaborative work. Uh, but we've been doing a, a lot of uh, responsible collaboration, which is two-way street, not just one-way street. And one I wanted to highlight, and I'll talk a little bit later on on that, uh, is uh, a, a chemical safety board. I'm sure most of you are aware of who the chemical safety board is in the US. Unfortunately, they are in a bit in trouble, and the team, we are looking at the leadership and the culture. Some things are missing here, and uh, uh, a week before last, I was in Senate uh, giving the testimony to the senator saying why this is important. Something we'll talk a little more about uh, in, in our panel discussion, but this is something I know the value of chemical safety board around the world. I have seen that. I think most of you probably know what they do, and they are <laughs> in big trouble, okay? Uh, and the last, this is my last slide. Uh, I just want to do a little bit of advertisement here. We have a major conference in, uh, in December. Uh, it will be held at Reliance. This would be a global summit in CCPS. And I look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you very much. <laughs>